Hey, where do humans come from? Um, what do you mean? Humans. They're everywhere, and they're even more everywhere than they used to be. Where are they all coming from? Oh, <laughs> well, when a bird and a bee love each other very much and have a trusting relationship based on mutual respect... See, this is what happens when you want to stop for ice cream. I have no regrets, apart from stopping for ice cream. Well, it's just this one time. The important thing is we don't take it personally or get confrontational. What are you doing? I'm being intimidating from a safe distance. This is what you're supposed to do to scare off enemies. I'm pretty sure that's bad. If it's bothering you that much, we can go and talk to them. Never! If history has taught us anything, it's that the fastest way to resolve a conflict is with threatening displays of strength from really far away. Which history do you think you mean? Snowman battle. Right, well, I'm going to assume that you mean the Cold War, but that's meeting you more than halfway. All I know is that the West Snowmen and the East Snowmen didn't trust each other, so they shook their fists at each other for 45 years and everyone was fine. I wouldn't say everyone was fine. There was a bit more to it than that. Mm, like what? Okay, well, first of all, it was humans, not snowmen. Doubtful. And it started around 1945 after a different big war. Two big superlands who were friends during the different war were celebrating their victory and deciding how to run the world from now on. They both decide that their own idea for running the world is better than the others, and that makes everyone upset. Who were the big super lands? Well, lots of people were involved, but the most powerful places on each side were the United States of America and the Soviet Union. They were so mad at each other and determined to prove that their way of life was better. Okay. So the United States were like, can your communism do this? And then started building nuclear weapons. And the Soviet Union was like, well, can your capitalism do this? And then sent a man to space. And then they also built nuclear weapons themselves because they managed to spy on the United States. Spy? Yeah, like trying to find out what the other side are doing. Find out their plans and secrets. Hmm, so if we had spies, we could find out what they're talking about? And they were roommates. My gosh, they were roommates? Sure. But I doubt they're talking about how to build nuclear missiles, which is what the Soviet Union learned from the United States. So now both superlands have nuclear weapons, which they can't really use because then no one wins. But they still like having them and reminding each other that they have them. Did they ever do any actual fighting? Not with nuclear weapons. But the two superlands could not stop arguing about who was better. So the Soviet Union built a wall through Germany to stop the spread of capitalism, and the United States sent soldiers to Vietnam to stop the spread of communism. And both of those things lasted a pretty long time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I want to build a wall around our bench, or invade Vietnam. Or go to war with some pigs, or have a missile crisis. Pigs? Yeah, a whole bay of them. The United States sent some agents there to overthrow Fido Castro because of communism. The US lost quite badly, and it made the president sad. But then he managed to stop the Soviet Union from storing their missiles in Cuba, and that cheered him up a bit. But it was a tense 13 days of everyone looking anxiously at each other's missiles, and then back at their own missiles, and then back at each other's missiles again. So if I try and act big and scary to make my enemy scared and back down... Then there's a good chance that they'll act big and scary too, yeah. And then you'll just have a stalemate. And then it just keeps going on forever? Maybe. But whilst they were arguing with the United States, the Soviet Union also started arguing with itself. Then, in 1991, the Soviet Union were so fed up of arguing altogether that they officially broke up into 15 separate countries, putting an end to the Cold War 45 years after it began. So, who won? I don't think anyone really won. They all just disagreed until they disagreed so much that they didn't have time to disagree anymore. Meanwhile, everything got really stressful for everyone else, which doesn't seem very fair. Hmm, well, I'm still upset about our bench, but... At least now I know that trying to be scary and angry is not always the best way to solve a problem. That's very mature of you. Unless there's a bear. Yeah, unless there's a bear.